What's up, mamas? I'm Rebecca. You're watching the Reseller Mom Show. Thank you for joining me today for another wonderful episode of Reseller Momversations. I'm so excited to have my guest today, Resale with Ryan on Instagram, and I'll let her introduce all her handles and all of her information and a little bit about herself. But thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to have you. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, like you said, I'm Resell with Ryan on Instagram, and on Poshmark, I'm Rai Rai Two Tai, and my name is Ryan. <laughs> so that's where Resell with Ryan comes from. Um, so I'm a stay-at-home mom and a full-time reseller, and I have been married for 22 years. Wow! And I have older kids, so I have um, college, high school, and middle school. Oh, okay. Yeah, 19, um, 17, and 14. Okay, interesting. Okay, great. Yeah. So, and I don't know, I'm trying to think. I know I've had some people on for reseller conversations that have had school-age kids, which is obviously like, seems like light years away for me from, you know, my little guy who's almost four. So having kids that are in middle school, high school and college that are like well into the taking care of themselves. You don't have to wipe their butts anymore, hopefully. Like how, how is that? Like how, when did you start reselling? I guess would be a good place to start in comparison to their ages. So that way we can get an idea of that. Cause I think everybody's always very curious of how does the momming and the reselling really work out right. at different stages? Right. Well, I've always been, into reselling. I've always been into garage sales and thrift stores and outlets. And, um, I used to put them all in the car, put a movie in, get lots of snacks. And my friends and I would go garage selling. Okay. Love garage selling. They'd get a couple dollars and get to get, you know, whatever they wanted. They get their budget. Yep. Right. But it was always like fun money, you know, right. just extra, or when I resold it, it was always for fun money. Um, I've been, a member of eBay since 2004 okay. and anytime I resold on eBay, it was like I said, fun money. It was before vacation and I just wanted to have like a jar of money that we didn't budget. Right. You just know, bonus extra. All five of us could get Starbucks at three o'clock in the afternoon and, you know, spend $50 on it or whatever. Right. <laughs> but, um, so I've always been into, you know, thrifting and stuff like that. And I became a member of Poshmark um, in 2016. Okay. In 2016, and again, same thing. Just wanted to make a couple hundred bucks a month. You know, it, it came up on my Instagram, and I was like, hey, I'll try it. And just sold stuff from my closet, and you know, just wanted to make a couple hundred bucks a month, and that worked out until the summer of the next year, 2017. Mm -hmm. And um, I had two girls in high school at the time um my oldest was a senior getting ready to be a senior and my middle one was getting ready to be a sophomore yeah. and um about two weeks before school started my sophomore just came to me crying and said i don't want to go back to the public school it's oh. big for me and we have a really good public school it's fine there's about um three thousand kids in it um, but she just needed something different and she realized that and she just could not go back there. She said, I, it's just not for me. I can't do it. She said, I really want to go to a private school. And I was like, okay, that's not in the budget, <laughs> but I didn't tell her that, but I just said, okay, we'll make it work. And that's the day that I just dove into reselling and I paid for her school for two years. And, um, so that's pretty much how I got into full-time reselling. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, and I'm just thinking on it because there's a couple things there, but I'm just, I think that when you have like a super purpose for the money that you're trying to make, mm -hmm. that almost sometimes works well. I'm having some thoughts about how I'm going to, you know, we're coming up on 2020 and I'm having thoughts about like, what changes am I going to make? Am I going to keep doing things this way? Am I going to do it that way? You know, how can I improve? And, um, sometimes I think of that, I'm like, you know, I'm running it more of like, a business where I would pay myself a salary, but I'm doing that last. And so sometimes it's not as much that, you know, that I would like for it to be. And I think about people that even though you're doing it full time, maybe you don't have, and we can talk about like, do you have people helping you and stuff like that? 
but you know, people that have like, I'm doing this to make this amount of money to do this thing, whether it's the vacation fund or school, or like I do it to pay Gio's little school, but even still, that's not an exorbitant amount. And I just find like people that have like a super purpose of where that money's going, like seem to do better, but that's just completely anecdotal. <laughs> I'm just making well, I just, it, Yeah. I just know that I have to make a certain amount yeah. per month to pay for her school. <laughs> so, and it's worked out. I'm on my second year of doing that. And now this year I have one in college. So I'm doing that also. Um, and my middle one also decided she wanted to do a missionary trip in Africa. So oh. I'm paying for that. <laughs> wow. She's really expensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, it's, those are things that we never thought we would be a, you know, have kids in private school and have to pay for it. And when that came up, it was kind of, I just had to take, you know, just do it. Right. So dove into it and said, this is what I'm going to do full time. And it's worked out and I love it. Yeah. No, that's, I think <laughs> great. Now, do you find like there are certain things that you do as you're tracking, like, okay, sales have been going this way for the month and it's not where I need it to be. So I'm going to do certain things to kind of proactively get me where I need to be? Like, are there certain tactics or tricks that you do if it's not going in? And maybe you don't have that problem, which hopefully you don't. Um, but I, I just, I think it came out, I just put out a video what I've been trying to do like on a daily basis um, and where I showed my goal tracker and how I'm trying to tracking the sales on a daily basis because I have a daily goal for myself. So if I'm not getting toward that or tracking toward that, I'm trying to proactively do things to hit that goal every day but I'm thinking for you, maybe you're doing it more on a monthly basis or something like that. Well, I actually have a daily goal that I, you know, okay. also, Good. so, um, but I get things pretty cheap, so I'm willing to do lots of sales Yeah, and it doesn't really hurt. It, you right. know, it doesn't bother me to do that or I'll right. do mystery boxes or just something to get, you know, that extra money in. Or Got it. Okay. And, and just mm -hmm. on the, older kids and then we can go off to another topic because you mentioned the reseller boxes and I do want to ask about that um what are some things like I have the little one so I'm in toddler zone and so I daydream of the day that he's just in school five days a week full time right so I'm like what can I do with all that time you have that time right but tell me how that's different like tell me why because <laughs> I I've heard from people like <laughs> hello, you need to chauffeur them around. They have activities. You have homework to help them with. And that's more like school age kids. And then you have more of like, you know, middle school, high school, college. Is that still part of it? Is that, are you very needing to uh, I'm still them? I'm or? busy during the day with them because I'll get texts in the middle of the day. They forgot something oh, or, you know, just, sure. I have to take golf clubs somewhere. And, um, but I definitely, have, I mean, have the whole day, which is so nice. I can go to the bins for four hours and, you know, come home and sort everything and they're still not home. So um, and usually they're gone for a couple of hours after school for practices. So it's pretty nice. Gotcha. Um, and two of them drive. So that's it's, cool. it's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. But it's fun having um, the teenagers, especially the girls, because they, help me with trends and they model clothes for me oh, and, which is nice yeah sometimes their friends come over and shop my closet that's good <laughs> yeah which is fun I love them. what do they pay you <laughs> no, usually it's stuff that I get you know really cheap anyway so I'm like just take it it's fine I mean, I've had prom dresses that I've just given to kids and yeah that's so, great yeah so, so it's fun it's just different are the older ones and they're cool with it, happy with mom, what she does. It's not a weird thing. It's good. No. Well, when I first started, I had a, um, I have an office just on the main floor of our house and I had all my bins in there and it's just a normal size office. Yeah. Um, and I had two mannequins and then I started taking over the, the hallway and then I started taking over the dining room and they were like, mom, this is getting creepy. We have mannequins around our house. And so I had to relocate to the basement, <laughs> which is good. It's really nice. It's, you know, a good size for me. Yeah. And I saw on your Instagram, it was a little while ago, I think where you went to the Charlotte, I don't know, the Roos, Russ, whatever, and you got your mannequins and your steamer and like all this 
all that. That that was awesome. I know a lot of people are kind of like looking to the stores as they go out for those things. I feel like I've only, I've got my Amy, my half hanging mannequin, which is probably, I think what you had. I got her from a thrift store going out of business sale for like six bucks, but I've never had the opportunity to go to any retail stores going out of business and buying any of their things. Do you, do they do that from the beginning or do you have to go like in the very final days? Well, that day I saw it, somebody else post something on Instagram and we happened to be close to the mall. So I, it was their last day and I was surprised they had that stuff left. Right. I, yeah. I asked them, I said, I, I said, what about steamers? Do you have any steamers in the back? Do you have any more rolling racks, anything? And they had stuff that they hadn't even brought out. Nice. So it was the very last day and they were just basically giving it away. It's crazy. Oh yeah, it was so I, nice. I imagine there's going to be a lot more of that and it would be good, you know, for people to keep that in mind because you don't always think about it. We're always like, oh, what can we get on Amazon or what are the latest things that we have to try to buy or whatever. And sometimes like I got my steamer, somebody just put it out on the curb. Yeah. That's how I got mine. So, um, that's, I wanted to bring that up too, for people that, you know, maybe are wanting different supplies, but not wanting to always spend sometimes yeah. money on it, especially like a rack. I think a rack is pretty expensive, like a good, cause I have a cheapo rack. <laughs> I have a cheapo like $15 rack and it like falls over all the time. So I know mine do too, but I, a lot of my, um, my like things that I've bought for my business have been from garage sales. Yeah. I mean, just today I posted, um, one of my reseller favorite tools and it's that, um, handheld sealer. I'll ask you about and that too. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, how do you, cause I've never thought about, so you just buy the open top cellophane bags yes. and then you put it in and then you're going to seal it with the heat press and it just seals it together and that's it. So you're not doing any kind of Ziploc or the thing that you pull, um, and then it reseals or anything. Right. Okay. It's, it's just open, which that's kind of hard to find because sometimes I order the wrong thing that has the seal on it, but, um, but yeah. yeah. So the bags on Amazon or like a U-line or something like that on Amazon? Both. Both. Oh, okay. And are they, would, are they cheaper than a resealable bag, I would think? I don't know. I've never really. Cause I, the ones that I have that are like this with the zipper are six cents a bag. I've gotten them a couple times a little bit cheaper, but most of the time for like this size, I think this is nine by 12. It's like six cents a bag. And I'm just dying to get it because I, I pre-pack everything. So I'm putting the cost up front for everything that I'm listing. I'm not doing it at the time that I'm selling it. So on the front end, it's pretty cash, inten cash intensive. And then if let's say I take something out of inventory, I get the bag back obviously because I can reuse it. That's why I like the zipper ones because you can reopen it and reuse it for a new item. Or like if somebody does a bundle, sorry, somebody does a bundle, I can shove a couple things sometimes in one bag and then keep the supplies for myself. So that's why I'm curious with that, like, unless they were way cheaper. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would do don't prepackage everything. Uh, mine's all hanging okay. or all in boxes. Okay. Um, because I tried that for a little bit, but with those seal ones, I had to open them if somebody had a question about it. Right. So, um, but I don't know about the price of it. Yeah. No, and that's fine. I'm just, I'm bringing it up because I've never really thought about that and I'm like well they because they don't have the resealable they must be cheaper because you're actually doing the sealing but for my system I don't know that I would want to go back to doing it at the end because I really like the fastest shipping process as possible because I'm doing it and getting Gio off to school and I have to go to my storage unit so for me I don't think that that because if I saw it on your Instagram I was like I need to ask her about that because that sounds very interesting as far as getting the price down but um, I think that that's a good point for people to consider because I think there's a lot of people, I have an inventory video coming out soon because I did it a while ago and then I changed because I always change, <laughs> so I always change systems, but I think this is the final one. And so that's coming out, I think at the end of this week. And I think a lot of people are in that, like they don't know if they should prepack, they see people doing that. And then they have, you know, people that are, do it at the end. And I think it's good to see the, all the pros and cons of it, you know, and what makes sense for their life. Well, you know? I'm actually getting ready to redo my inventory system and I want to pre to prepackage. Okay. Because I, I just am getting so much 
um, so many items that it's just getting hard to find them. And I mean, pre I pretty much know where everything is, but right. it'll be that first thing in my pile of, you know, packages that I have to package up and I'm like, can't find it. Right. And it takes forever. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I'm actually getting ready to, I just don't want to. <laughs> And that, and that's the thing. And that's what I talk about in the video too, is like to plan to be bigger than you are, which I did not do and only recognize the value of it now. And I wouldn't say I'm so big, but I've been upwards of 2000 items and I've been as low, obviously way lower, but now I'm at about 1400 items. And I kind of like that amount, but I could always do more because I have more capacity in the storage right. unit. But if you're shipping, I would say six to 10 items on a consistent basis. Having it pre-packaged really helps, really helps. And if you do have little ones and you're trying to do the get them off to school and shipping in the morning, like some people don't do shipping in the morning, but for me, that's the best, you know, the way it works to get to the storage unit or whatever. I think it cuts down on mistakes and just time and all of that. And now I'm doing the with the label and I get those on Amazon and it just goes, I don't have to take something in and out. Like there's just I'm I'm really now. <laughs> Poor yeah. man. That's okay. what I'd like to do. So cool. Yeah. So that's good. Cause yeah, I did want to ask you about that heat press because I was really curious about that, but I think it would serve a purpose for people. Now, do you think you will use that still and just pre-do it? Or are you going to go to a resealable because then you can't un uh, open it or whatever? I love it. So I don't know. I mean, I just love it. I love the look of it and I, you know, sometimes I put a sticker on it, so I don't know. Okay. I don't know what to do. Cool. But I have two of them because I found two of them at a garage sale, which I can probably <laughs> sell one of them. But um, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, play around and see. You know, try different things and see what works. I mean, that's what I feel like this whole year has been for me is like just trying out every. I mean, I've been doing this now a little over three years, uh -huh. and I'm really hoping that 2020 is the year where I can just see what I've got and <laughs> not, you know, like monkey around with all kinds of things where I'm trying stuff. Like I just want to like pit this last like two months of the year, I'm really like deciding what I'm going to do. And then next year I'm just doing that and right. seeing how much I can make. Cause I'm still on the fence of, is this viable? Like once Geo goes to kindergarten, yeah, that's when it's either you're making actual money at this or your butt's going back to a job. Right. <laughs> so, right. So I'm like, I have very little time now to like make it work. And I'm trying to figure out like, what are the best things? And that was something else. Cause now we are kind of coming into the time where people are thinking about goals and changes and next year and whatever. Do you have anything like you just said, like you're thinking of changing over your inventory system. Is, are there other things that you're kind of thinking of changing, improving, doing for next year that would be different from this year? Well, I definitely want to cross list, cross post more. Okay. And you're on I have eBay. Right. I have um, and I do have a lot on like Macari. I have a lot on there, but my biggest thing is just taking the time to do that. Yeah. So that's one thing that I want to work on is just cross posting everywhere. And, um, so I saw your Poshmark because that was in your link tree. So you're on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari, but you don't put all, everything on all three. You pick and right. choose what you put where. Um, my Mercari, I mostly put things that I bring home that I'm like, why did I bring this home? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I mean, I do, I do put, you know, just my regular stuff on there sometimes, but sometimes when I just need to get rid of stuff, I take a quick picture. I don't even edit it, nothing. And I put it on Macari. Got it. I mean, I do pretty, you know, they, people buy stuff on there too. So yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. surprised sometimes, you know, my Mercari has been very steady. I've, you know, my what sold videos, I'm always like another solid week of like one or two a day, a hundred something dollars a week, you know, like it's just been very steady. I really feel like if I had my VA relist more for me, like the fresher, the, cause you really can't do anything. I mean, I don't know if those promote buttons, I don't spend time on that. I don't know if it works. It does, I've never seen a return on it. Yeah. I think, you know, just the relisting and showing new things hits the right person at the right time. And if they have money in their account, they buy it. And, um, it's just funny the things that sell on there. Cause that's how I look at it too. Like, I just want to put stuff that I can sell cheap and just kind of get, I mean, I put everything, but yeah. in my mind, I think that, 
But then like I sold a Kate Spade purse for, you know, a hundred bucks. I sold a cashmere skirt for a hundred bucks. I'm like, that was weird. I wasn't expect like everything goes on there because it's just automatic, but it su surprises me sometimes some of the higher end things. So I haven't really gotten a, my thumb on Mercari yet. So I'm always interested to see what other people's strategies are or how they view it of what they put and what they don't put. So. Uh yeah, I like Mercari's. I get better offers, <laughs> and I know it's because you have the choice to do like a you know ten percent off or whatever. They give right. you a choice, but I feel like I don't get it. No, really Star Trek, it's always half, isn't it? It's either like five dollars off <laughs> or it's half. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> <Nope. laughs> the five dollars off, I'm happy to do. You know, most of the time, and then the half every once in a while, I will do it just because I'm like, how long has this been here? especially if it's in my old inventory system, because I really want to get those condensed down. I'm like, I'll basically, I'm just, I think I'm going to probably do like a three for 20, some, some kind of really super duper. So I haven't done one in a while because it takes time to put the emoji and do all the stuff. Right. But I think I'm, I'm needing to do it, especially before the end of the year where I um, have to do my inventory which is like a two day process. Yeah. <laughs> <Three> -day process. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, so cross posting more and doing your inventory system. Were there any other things? I'm just really into what everybody's changing for next yeah. year. So I'm just curious. Um, I just need to get on a better schedule. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I could thrift every day if I wanted to. And that's my problem is I come home with so much stuff. Gotcha. That's the best part about this job. Is and you're at the bin. So, yes. Well, I kind of do everything. Okay. Garage sales, Goodwill, bins. We actually have five bins, five Goodwill outlets within 30 minutes of me. Where are you again? <laughs> Indiana. Indiana. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Five yeah. bins in 30 minutes. Yeah. I mean, I thought I was lucky that we just got a second one in Orlando too within 30 minutes because I hear about people that drive hours upon hours and I was like, I, I never really look. So five, that's, I might have to make a little, I'm like obsessed with doing a, a thrifting trip. I want to do a thrifting trip too. We <laughs> should do it though. And then I'll, I'll flip to you because, and I've never been to Indiana and I'm like obsessed with like, I really need to start closing in on my 50 states. Like I want to be in all 50 <laughs> and I've been about half. So Indiana's on the list. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll talk about that. But um, so how do you choose which one to go? Like, is it just completely random or there's some that are better than others? And um, they're all pretty good. They're clean. I mean, I've been to some in other states that I would not go back to. Right, right. But, um, ours are all pretty clean and I feel you know, like I always find stuff, but I have one that I always go to because it's like 15 minutes from me. Gotcha. Um, and I know people there and we all are like, hey, good morning. And yeah, you know, um, regular crew. Yeah. And there's two that I've never been to. Hmm. And I've been to the other ones and they're all good. They're yeah. all good. But, but yeah, I've got plenty to, I know. And you have nice stuff in your closet. Are you finding a lot of these designer things at the bins or are those more, you know, Goodwill retail or garage, you know, cause you have like really nice designer things in your closet. Yeah. I find a lot of it at the bins, a lot of it. That's and right. sometimes I go through, I mean, and I also live about two minutes from a Goodwill. Okay. So every time I go to the school or I, I just stop like right. every single day I stop and right. I always say, are you guys sick of seeing me yet? <laughs> Cause I feel like they're like, we just saw you yesterday, but I mean, there, there'll be weeks where I'll stop every single day just to look in it. Yeah. And do um, you think that you're, you know, one of the few or maybe the only reseller that's like going to that store. So it kind of works out or are you in a heavy reseller area that you know of? I don't think the particular area I live in is that heavy, okay. but like Indianapolis, like when I go to the bins, I know that right. most of the people are resellers. Right, 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 right. Trying to find different things than I am, but um, but when I go to regular Goodwills, I'll get into this like groove of going and then I get mad at myself because I spent so much money there. <laughs> Why am I not going to Vince? Right. So it, 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 
you know, there was a while where I did only go to the bins. And I said, I'm not going to the, cause I really wanted to drive my, my cost of goods low and it works cause you can get so many, it, you know, and you're averaging out everything. It just really drives it low. If you could focus on it for a month, you know, you'll see your average drop. And, um, then I went back to a retail because at ours, we get loyalty points. You can earn them at the bins, but you can't spend them at the bins. So once I rack up points, then I'll go to the Goodwill retail and spend my points. And I went and I was like, it's so nice to go through a rack. <laughs> like, you know, like you're in a you know, boutique, you know, you're in yeah. the highest end store because you're like going through racks of clothing instead of digging through bins and whatever. So I go, I go in fits too. Like I, I get into it and then I get out of it. I get mad at myself for the amount that I spend because you know, you can get it cheaper. But at the same time, I do feel like maybe I would get a more concentrated amount of higher end things at the Goodwill retail. And if I got in the habit of only buying those things there, then it would be okay. But right. I get stuck in the, I need to drive my cost low. And then I end up picking up things maybe that are not as high end at the bins because they're so cheap or I'm trying to make the most of my trip or whatever. Yeah. I get, I get stuck on, that's one of the things that I'm trying to work out for myself for the coming years, like really honing in on some parameters or something to give myself some boundaries. Right. But the Goodwill retail is still pretty cheap. So <laughs> it is. I mean, well, for some, because I mean, some people so like, I don't know for you, like how much is a dress? For you guys, well, let's just get ready to say that the dresses are six ninety nine. Okay, and so are um, ours are seven forty nine. Yeah, and and we have really good like one of my retail um, stores I go to has really good dresses, and I know if I start looking, I'm gonna have like five dresses in my car, and I try to just stay away from it because yeah. I mean you know that's forty bucks right there. Absolutely, so. absolutely, and it's you know, sometimes I get a lot of sales of dresses. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I'm just not the best picker of them, but like it is a hefty spend for me if I don't find something that's on the half off, which doesn't happen regularly. So I'm paying full price for it. So it's gotta be like a good dress for me to spend 749. Cause I remember in the beginning I would pay full price. Like when I first started and I was picking up things, I'd pay 749 for like a loft dress and thinking, Oh, I could get 30 bucks for this. And <laughs> And, and every once in a while, you could still probably right. get a, a decent amount for a loft dress. It depends on what it is, but I would still never spend <laughs> 49 for it now. Like, oh, that gives me, mm. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 don't, old self, yeah. don't do that. Um, before, before too long goes by, I do want to ask you about the reseller mystery boxes mm -hmm. or mystery boxes, because I've seen. I've seen the reseller mystery box in your Poshmark closet, but then I saw on your Instagram, just the mention of mystery box. I wasn't sure if you did different ones. I always want to do them, but I'm always scared to do them. But I saw in one of your posts that you had like over 85 sold or something. So actually on my Poshmark sold about 200 of them. Um, but I just like to go to, to shop. And yeah. so some days I'm just done. I can't, list anymore and I and you know I get them for so cheap that I don't mind um putting six or seven items in a box and I try to do really good items so right. I've had pretty good feedback on them yeah I mean tell me and I didn't look into the listing um but I'm just curious because I don't know if I will because I feel like I've seen people do them and then they've had problems and I would really hate to have that <laughs> um because you just can, I mean, have you had issues where you didn't make someone happy or do you put language in there that kind of helps prevent an issue? Can cases be open with, re, you know, I'm just really curious about like, if, if you would like to share it, you don't have to, but. Um, I, I don't think I've ever had a case open on a mystery box. Okay. Um, there's been like one where the lady asked for all extra larges and I may have put a large in there. And so she didn't like it, but she right. put like four stars or something like that. Yeah. But, um, okay. And there's been maybe one or two where the people are like, this just isn't my style. And honestly, I'm really good about if somebody wants to return something because I get it so cheap, I just tell them to keep it. Most okay. of the time. And I know that's probably 
people don't like to do that, but I'd rather just end it and be done with it and right. just say, keep your, keep it. It's totally fine. Resell it if you want to. Right. Um, but I mean, that's maybe happened one or two times. Right. So. And they're primarily reseller boxes or primarily people to buy for themselves. Both. Well, um, yeah. And it, when people buy for themselves, they'll, they'll send me a message and say, Hey, can you do this size and mostly tops or, you know, no dresses. And I'm totally fine with doing that. So right. and I have a couple repeat buyers that just buy, buy them like once a month. That's awesome. That's so. awesome. Now, do you have things set aside and it's, this is my reseller box stuff that you're pulling from. So it's unlisted things, or are you pulling from your listed things to accommodate their request? Both. I do have a pile of reseller box things that I mostly go through. Um, I always like to look and see if that, if the buyer has liked anything. Okay. And if they've liked something and it's, you know, worth it for me to put it in there. Right. If it's been listed for a long time, I'll put it in there. Okay. Um, and sometimes if I'm just ready to move, get out, get my inventory moving, I'll take it out of my listings. Okay. So. okay. But I do about six or seven items sometimes I mean if I'm really trying to get rid of stuff I'll put 10 items in there as long as it's five pounds you right. know right so you don't quote them the number or maybe you do a minimum it says at least yeah six items okay. so and what does it go for 40 okay so a little over six an item not that you're getting but that they're paying so right. I think that's still very good price. And I'll send out offers. I mean, sometimes people get them on sale. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, the whole idea is cool to me because it is nice. Sometimes you do get a lot of stuff and then you're like, what am I supposed to do with it? Or you, you do get a little bit burnt out of listing or whatever. <laughs> and I've just, I've just seen, you know, from watching different people, I'm just like, it seems like a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. but I think there are people that have really good, um, luck with it. So, you know, I think it's just trying to cultivate and be very clear with the expectations of people. I don't know. Well, and, and my listing, when I first started doing them, I mean, it took a long time to sell a bunch of them, but now I have, you know, like 300 likes and like 300 comments on it. And so people go through and look at all the comments and that's, that helps a lot. Okay. So I just got one listing on there and I edit it sometimes to put, you know, just, just offer like I have 15 available or something, but I always keep that one listing. I have two listings up for mystery boxes now, but there's that one that's my original that has a lot of likes on it and people look at that one. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And so, but if they bought it, you have it in multiple quantities, so it wouldn't go away. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, I just, I love multiple quantity listings. <laughs> like anything. <laughs> buy stupid stuff because of, like I just I'm like oh I could put it up once and sell it again and again so I've made a couple like really stupid purchases so that I'm thinking I could sell it again and again and they just don't sell yeah. um, so there's been a few <laughs> bad moves on on my part with that because I get sucked in <laughs> by the multiple quantity list I do too I get sucked in just by brands or I'm like what why did I buy this nobody's gonna buy this for me you know like a vintage dress or something and but I, it's funny because vintage is not my style at all. And I would never really wear any of these pieces that I buy, but every once in a while, I think it's mostly the denim stuff or a dress. That's kind of like more, I like fifties and sixties style, like really classic and, or really like mod, I, like the short shift dress and things like that. And I, I'm such a sucker for those. And I've had good luck with them and then I've had terrible luck with them. So I'm just not really sure. It's just really got to be, I guess, a style thing of, and size, of course, right. to, you know, hit the right person at the right time with the right thing. Cause if they're not looking for a brand, it's not like this trendy, whatever, you know? So I haven't really hit my stride. I've thought about kind of mixing it all together, but then I'm like, but somebody just paid $30 for that one thing. You know, like sometimes you get a nice, a nice one so well, yeah and like um right now you know the kids the kids I feel the so kids. old <laughs> the 
they're wearing like the big sweatshirts that are old or even the crop sweatshirts. And that's when I need my girls to model it for me because they know how to wear it, you right. know, the mom jeans and so. Yeah. Well, and I do think that in cer there are certain pieces that would be best modeled that because I don't and won't, I really don't want to. <laughs> so, yes. I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> really don't like want it and it and I don't even mind like putting it on but I just it's t it would be very time consuming and because I right. do have a helper and a photographer person that helps me and then I do some additional myself like I'm just finding that the more I do things that are outside of my main system I put it off like I'm almost at the point where I don't want to do anything that I have to flat lay because that's not my system and like I have the hanging rack I have the thing you know, like I have a whole thing that goes super fast when I get in my groove that when I have to stop and deal with flat lays, it's like a whole thing. Right. So I yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, should I model this? And then I've got PJ pants on and I'm like, no, I can't model this because then I'd have to change and I don't want to go through all that. Right. So. right, 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 right. Cool. Um, what other um, tips or tricks or any kind of things that you wanted to let people know my timer went off I want to be respectful of your time and everybody that's watching um and I had more things to talk with you about of course um but if you had any you know additional things that you wanted to say because I think the people that you know come on to the conversations are like me passionate about being a mom and having reselling being a really great way to bring money into your family and be a mom. And I think we're just a bunch of like-minded people now that are kind of like, yeah, get, you know, getting in a little community. So I'm just really curious of what your thoughts might be for moms or in general. Well, one thing I didn't mention, but so my daughter has a Poshmark. Okay. So good. Um, my son sells online and my mom has a Poshmark and, oh my God. My aunt and my cousin. So we're like, we're always talking about it and which is fun. Yeah. But along with the kids, I mean, they, you know, I, I think they're, they like making their own money and they know that, you know, they can make money that way, which yep. is nice. Yep. So, um, but I would say find, I mean, I sell anything. I don't stick to all vintage or all really high end because I think people buy mall brand stuff. Right. You right. Know, I, I look for a certain kind of jean that I like that I find at the mall mm -hmm. and I'll go on and that's what I'm looking for. I mean, a lot of people haven't heard of some of the higher end. I mean, especially like anthropology brands. A lot of people don't just go look for that. They look for express oh, jeans or. I don't know about it until I started. I've never heard of <laughs> I mean, again, I'm. Not yeah. Old. Yeah. <laughs> so I think anything can sell. So don't, you know, don't get discouraged if that's all you find because people are looking for those things. Oh, so yeah. I do believe that. Um, but just, I mean, it's going to take time and energy and. <laughs> I mean, even after three years, and I kind of am putting this, like I put it in, I've been doing it three years, but I'm starting in my head to say three stay at home mom years, <laughs> because it's not like doing it three years. I knew I could have done it if it was pre geo. Like, I think if I were to have any regret at all, it was that I didn't know that reselling was a thing or I didn't find Poshmark specifically before geo. Instead, I was doing swag bucks, you know, at work sometimes. And I was clipping coupons and doing extreme couponing and like that energy that I spent into like saving money and all these deals and stuff, I could have channeled into making money and I would have had a way different setup and platform for myself going into staying home with geo. And so that's probably my one and like, God, I wish I they could have totally rocked this thing before. <laughs> I agree oh, with you. I'm like, I could have done this a long time ago. Why did I start right now? And, yeah. and, and it's it is fine. You know, it is what it is, but I totally understand. I wish I would have done this a long time ago. Yeah. And I think, you know, for people, I am one of those people that I think is meant to do their own thing. I'm really a self-starter. I'm good at making a million lists and schedules for myself and can stick to them. And once I get in my zone, I'm really good. My biggest problem is that I can never get in my zone because I have to go wipe a butt. <laughs> go look at Gio, put one Lego on top of his tower and say, mom, look at this. I still have that with my 14 year old son. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm 
was like, right now? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, everybody just has to be okay with the season that they're in. And that's why I like having different people with different seasons with you with the older kids like what is that like like what do I have to know about because like I said I'm over here daydreaming about you know like next year geos and VPK which is five half days I'm like what am I gonna do with my extra two days like ah! so, so you know it's nice I think for people especially there's I think there are I don't know maybe because I'm just in it but I feel like there are a lot of reseller moms that have younger kids like I don't because you could go do something else later when your kids are in school. And so this is a, you know, if you're staying at home or you're doing it in addition, you may have younger kids and it's nice to give them a little bit of glimpse of like what the options are later yeah. for them if they choose to consider to do it. And cause I'm curious about it. So I appreciate you giving us that. Well, cause I knew you had the three kids, but I wasn't exactly sure their ages. So it's nice that they, you know, to hear about them when they're older and, you know, kind of that, that you're giving them real skills too right by showing them how to buy and sell right really they'll always be okay as long as they know how to do that you know what i mean like obviously you want better things for them perhaps but you know like as long as they know how to buy and sell something they'll make it okay they won't go hungry i right. think about that for you like you can just go to a garage sale and pick up <laughs> something he'll be fine someday right well and i went to the posh fest this year Oh yes, which was amazing, and I, it was amazing how the age range of people. Mm. So that was an eye opener. I mean, there's you know really young people doing it, and older people, older than me, doing it, and so yeah. people with no kids and retired, and uh, you know it was pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, no, that's enjoy. I mean, I kind of think sometimes like what you know all these young, and I, that's why I know with like the reseller mom show, I know I'm not gonna get to be a a big channel because it's so specific into reseller moms that even care to classify themselves, you know, in that way and stuff like that. And so I'm not going to always appeal to all the millennial 20 year olds that are watching a more hip version of a YouTube channel, than mine. but you know, because they're into the fashion of it or whatever, um, you know, and mine's just meant to be very practical and to always give a voice to what we specifically deal with as moms, but I do think it would be interesting to see as I'm on a little bit longer, if there's, cause I've had a few, one or two people messages that I'm not a mom yet, but like they know that it's coming or they're doing, they're getting into reselling cause they're hoping that that can be a thing for them when they're a mom, which would be cool to see, you know, that there's a whole generation of young women that are doing this on the side now while they're in college or in their, you know, job, maybe not making as much money as they'd like to. And they do it on the side or like my sister who's, you know, in her thirties, but doing it in addition to her job. And, but then could, could make this more of a thing for themselves if they decided to be more flexible for their family or something like that and stay home. So I, think I tell my kids that I'm like, you could do this. This could be what you do. You know, yeah. you don't have to go to college and I mean, my oldest is wants to be a nurse, but my the my middle one is the one that sells online too. And I'm like, this is what you could do if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, you can make money, and they pay for you know lots of things with it. So absolutely, absolutely, I do believe that it can be a really good thing. So yeah, well, tell everybody where they can find you one more time, and I'll link everything below. But let, give all your handles and links and things. Well, I'm at Instagram at resell underscore with underscore Ryan. Yes. And on Posh, Poshmark is Rai Rai to Thai. Awesome. Um, well, thank you again for being on. I appreciate it. We've thank connected a bunch of times pre-talking on this show on Instagram, and it's nice to, you know, chat with you. Um, and I hope, you know, that you'll kind of... I'm. I'm I think I'm going to start like a round two <laughs> when, you know, I'm going to get through a few more new people, but then I'd like to start having more people back. So hopefully you'll want to come back in the future and maybe in 2020 and let us know how that changeover of the inventory system. This is my very first time ever going live, or not live, but. I don't want to say that, but I remember you had said that when we communicated and you were a little, you know, nervous or anxious about it. And I, and that's why I think it's cool too, because I don't, I started out, re and I do want to continue to reach out to people that are like YouTube people because they're used to doing it. It's easy for them. It's not as 
big of a jump or whatever. But I just feel like sometimes it's the same people over and over again. It's like, who, you know, I went on a daily refinement show and then he was on my channel and, and then, you know, El Ducho and, you know, people that are out there that already have a channel, we're just flip flopping channels, which is great because conversations are organic and you never know where it's going to go. But I like seeing the the moms on Instagram that are posting interesting things that pique my interest that are, are doing well. And you know, whether it's just on eBay or just on or whatever they're doing. And I'm curious about them in some way, or they've contacted me to say, Hey, I want to, you know, tell people stuff. And maybe you don't have your own channel and you don't have to, but at least you get a chance to connect with moms in a way that, you know, you have a completely different experience but at the same time, it's very relatable to somebody out there that's watching today. Not to me, it's completely you have me. area, but you know, there's somebody with older kids that's like, yes, I totally, you know, and that's nice. And I think we all need a little bit of that connection just to know that there is someone else out there in somewhat of a similar <laughs> situation, right. you know, even if you don't ever actually get to talk to them, but just to know they're there. <laughs> right. And it does help having older kids because they tell me like, how to post on Instagram sometimes and don't do that mom or you know they're trying to get me to do a YouTube which I'm not quite there yet but I feel like they would help me so that is that's you know a plus to having the older kids yeah absolutely no I think that's great I'm curious the other day Gio said something about post it on Facebook or something but it was like posted on my Facebook yes was like on his Facebook I'm like I don't know know that you don't have a Facebook. Right. <laughs> like I purposely did. I thought about it when he was, you know, born. like, should I make him his own? And then I thought I read about it and people were like, you're kind of just going to embarrass them later. So just don't like, it's bad enough that you're embarrassing <laughs> him on your page, let alone on his own page with his name. <laughs> so I said, no, but, um, you know, he popped in on my live at one point. He's, you know, then the other day he was crying cause he wanted to T talk to the people on the YouTube mm -hmm. and I said well we'll go on Instagram instead so we went on Instagram because he like he knew I was on and I cut it off because he came in here with no pants on <laughs> so I'm like okay you can't do that so we'll talk to the people on Instagram so I mean he's gonna start growing up knowing about all of that it'll be interesting to see how he how, what that means to him you know right. who knows I don't know what that means but it'll be interesting at least yours they've already been They're little, in it right now in the yeah. social media and so yeah. that's nice. and so a lot of their friends follow me and they'll, they'll make you know comments and I'm like did she really just say that you know it's just it's it's fun I like it hopefully I, I would definitely encourage you to do a channel maybe that's something you want to try to do for you know next year or whatever when you're ready I waited until I couldn't take being nervous anymore that I said <laughs> I'm so tired of being nervous I'm just gonna do it but that took me a while to get to that point. And then I just did it. And then it... now I, I like yours. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, we just drove back home for like 12 hours and I watched a ton of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's, it's funny to see because now in February, it'll be a year, which I can't believe. And I, and this is one of the things that I'll be making changes to in the future. I've just got to see what it is because it is very time consuming. And I do think about, what it's taking away from the reselling or what it's taking away for other things. I have a video coming out today, this week about multiple streams of income and the different things that I do aside from reselling. So it's, it's, it's exciting. I love it. I, but I don't know, I'm doing five shows a week. Like I, like I'm like a, you know, sitcom over here or something. <laughs> so I'm like I can't, I, I did it because I wanted to get to the monetization within my time frame that I had set for myself, which I did. And that's great. Um, and now I think it's time to figure out what's a sustainable schedule, right. which for right now, because it is still limited with geo only in part-time school, five shows is aggressive for me. Um, so I think I'll scale it back a little bit. I'm not, you know, quitting or anything, but I think I'm going to see which, what do people like the best, you know, and what do I like the best of doing and then just keep it to those kinds of videos and then expand it back out once I get more time. Because I like doing it. I, I wonder how you have time to list. <laughs> well, but I have helpers and that's the thing. I mean, I and we didn't talk about that and we can, we can talk about it, but I have 
a photographer locally, a woman that comes and picks up items and does the prep, does the photography and fills out a form. And then those photos go to the virtual assistant and she lists them on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. She does all the deletions when something sells. She manages my spreadsheet. You know, I keep her like on retainer every month. Plus I pay her additionally for the listings. I have my VAs share for me. So I do bonus work. I don't do the main work. I list and photograph to kind of like offset the costs of what they're doing and just get more done because obviously they have a capacity too. Um, but there are some days where I don't get to do any photos. Yeah. There's definitely days that I don't do any listing. Um, I spend more of my time on systems and processes. But for me, I like that better. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to sit here and take photos all day. I don't know that any of us, do. like, I think we don't mind it. I don't mind it. It's fine. Put on an ebook, put on YouTube, whatever, and just jam it out. But I just always felt like if I could do the next thing with my mind instead of with my hands, that would make me more money. But I will say that because I've made some missteps throughout this year and a prior year, I'm really reevaluating where I'm using that labor, what I'm using that labor for, what makes the most sense for me to do myself now that my schedule's opened up a little bit compared to like my photographer has been with me for two years. Gio was too. He was taking three hour naps that like everything's a little bit different. So I think, um, that's what I'm going to reevaluate on, but having that labor and feeling the benefits of having them, but also the pressure of having to fill a quota. Like I have an agreement with my photographer of how many items I give her. I kind of, you know, feel a responsibility to my VAs that they make a certain amount of money, you know, based on a certain amount of listings. And that's pressure too. Or sometimes what if you don't have a good day at the bins? Now I'm buying stuff that maybe I shouldn't because I need to have so many items because I told them I was going to have a certain amount. I'm paying that on the front end. So um, it's good when it's good. <laughs> so, and then when you make some missteps, it can get ugly real quick. <laughs> so I, this has been a year of... of several cash flow <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So I, have, um, I i'll hire a va every once in a while just to share and that is right there is just a load lift i'm just like oh, oh yeah. for the rest of the year that's amazing so yeah i thought did, did you did we talk about that earlier because we connected on a couple it wasn't you okay sorry um because different people say hey how much do you, you know they just like ask a quick question here and there on dm and then i get confused on which is which but um i might have but i don't know yeah i don't remember but um having you know you go from doing it all yourself and then adding a va for one thing or the next thing or the second thing it really is amazing but when you go with it over time if you're not adding to what they're doing and they're just taking away work from you that's where you get into trouble which is what i've learned and i'll go and bouts of it where sometimes they'll take work away from me and I won't get to do anything. And I'm just happy that they're working because at least something's getting done and whatever I make, I make. But then there are times where I'm putting in a lot of work too. Plus I have them. And as a result of both of our efforts, <laughs> you know, we may not be getting where we want to go. And then you're really in a conundrum because not only did you put in all this work, now you have to pay this other person too. Right. You know, where's all the money coming from? So that's why I say I really have to work on, um, my salary <laughs> this year and not and put it before their salaries because really there are some times where i've done all this work they've done all this work and they get paid and me not so much so um you know just in an honest an honest va moment yeah <laughs> gotta really think about that stuff and be prepared because those are the lessons that i'm learning as i go but and i'm still a bit hard time letting go of like I want to do it all myself or, you know, I have a hard time. I'm like, what if they don't write, do the picture the way I want? But I don't know. We'll say I would like to have somebody take pictures, but almost every night I say, I'm just going to pull an all nighter and I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And about two listings, I'm ready to go to bed. So <laughs> it's, it just, it gets old. It gets monotonous. And the thing is, if there are other things that you want to put your mind and effort to like sourcing more or doing a different kind of 
income stream or whatever it is, then it could very well make sense to have someone do that physical repetitive thing. And it would make sense for you to put in the time and effort to train that person, give them feedback, really hone them in and manage them. Because then like in the beginning, my photographer would come to the house and I did everything and she watched. Then she started helping me. Then she started doing it herself here. Then she took everything home with her and did it at her house, but we would still hand off the items. Now she, I, she has a key to my storage unit. She comes and picks it up on her own. I don't even see her for weeks on end. Yeah. And it's completely turnkey. All I do is buy the stuff and hand it off and the pictures show up and the, you know, so it, but right. that's taken over two years yeah. to get to that point. I don't think it needs to, <laughs> but again, in stay at home mom years, it took two years to get to that point. Um, and you know, that's why sometimes I'm like, I don't want to get, get rid of that help because we've put in a lot of time and effort to make that help work out. And then sometimes I'm like, well, as I can do more, maybe I should, um, like with you, you have the more time. So it's a matter of can, are you just looking to do more? And so if you get someone, then you can do more, or are you looking to possibly make a little less, but not do all of it? You know? Right. And you you'll get there too, where, you know, Geo's gone more during the day. And yeah. I mean, like right now I don't have to have one. It would just be nice. Right. Absolutely. And it, and it, I think share sharing is probably the best and first step that someone, in my opinion, should take with a VA because it's a time-consuming task, easily trainable. There's really no mistakes. Right. For some reason, it doesn't happen. It's not going to kill everything, you know, if they miss a day or whatever. Um, and you can have someone locally do it or you can hire virtually. Like in the beginning, I had someone locally but remote do it. Now I have someone virtually and remote do it. Um, so, you know, you can go about it in a lot of different ways, but it's a huge time saver, you know, that yeah. makes a big difference initially. So, okay. I won't keep you for very much longer. Sorry. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> you already told everybody where to find you. I will link it below. Thank you again so much for coming on the show. And this is just a bonus extended edition. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, come to Indiana anytime. Oh, get one yet. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching for more reseller mom content to get more done make more money and stay sane while raising kids and reselling online, please subscribe. Hit that like button on the way out and leave us a comment and let us know if you have any two cents about anything we've talked about. I respond to all of the comments and, and um, Brian can take a look at them as well if she'd like to pop in on any of them if you have something for her or hit her up on Instagram. Um, but we appreciate you being here and we will see you on the next one next week. Bye.